Welcome to Comms Business Live. My name is David Dungate, editor and publisher of Comms Business Magazine. And today we have Knight Corporate Finance with us. We have Adam Zoldan and Paul Billingham, directors of the business, to talk about the M&A landscape pre and post COVID. So welcome, gentlemen. Welcome to the show. How are you all doing today? Thank you. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Good. Nice to see you, Dave. Thank you. Excellent. So look, for anyone that might not be familiar with with Knight Corporate Finance, um, Adam, why don't you give us a, a, a whistle stop? You know, what what is the business? What what do you do? Where do you specialise? Um, so Knight Corporate Finance uh, has been established around eleven years, and we're built to help um, entrepreneurs, and business owners, um, to maximise value of their business. Really, we do this across sort of four uh, key products. Um, being sort of a strategy, uh, starting at the end and working out where business needs to go, funding, uh, acquisitions, but we're probably best known for um, the advice assistance we give our clients in exit scenarios. Okay, so clearly we're in a bit of a uh, unprecedented time. How many times have we heard that word, unprecedented, over the last three months? A lot. Yeah. Um, so. What what are you seeing from a from a channel point of view from your customers? What are you seeing? Um, what what were you seeing over the last three months? What what has been going on? Pop, take that one. Yeah, so um, just in terms of activity in our business, uh, we've we've pretty much continued business as usual, other than everyone's working at home. But um, we've now completed three deals since lockdown. Um, we've got four or five that are probably four to five weeks away from completion. And so, yeah, we've not really seen any diminishing appetite for transactions in the sector. And I think that's a reflection of the, you know, continuing importance of ICT resellers in particular to help help businesses get through this uh, crisis. You know, I think ICT resellers have been at the forefront of ensuring everyone can continue working where they can from home, from their offices and, and obviously you know, conference calls and everything. And, uh, yeah, it, we're in. We're very fortunate that we're focused on on telecoms and technology, and that seems to be the area of the uh, the, the sector that that's probably continuing to operate as normal as anyone can do. Yeah, absolutely. It's great time to be in communications for, for sure. Um, I mean, Adam, was was there a sense of urgency back in the February, early March time? You were going through these processes that people were like we've got to get these done, or was it really were people quite relaxed about that? Yeah. The first thing that happened was um, everyone got incredibly busy um, in terms of lots of uh, lots of um, uh, panic customers uh, looking to ensure that they were set up to, to work remotely. And uh, we were so impressed at the way that that got handled. And, and we saw people working hard and long hours just to ensure um, that uh, Britain could keep working, really. Um, then rather predictably we've started getting calls um from um uh, buyers asking for asking if there was um any fire sales any businesses suffering from distress but actually you know we, we saw the opposite people were busy um pe um the the comms and the it side were probably at the forefront of business owners minds in terms of keeping the lights on in the business so um yeah, the resellers were providing a great service and getting paid for it. We didn't, we haven't really seen any signs of distress at all. Um, so um, what we did see was some purchasers, some investors take a step back and um, take some time to gather their thoughts uh, in terms of how um, how they were going to address their acquisition strategy during, during the lockdown. And we did see uh, one or two deals go on hold and um interestingly of, our, of two of the larger deals that did go on hold at, at the beginning one um is now back on and is looking to complete and the other one quickly got um uh, approached by an alternative party and so uh, <laughs> the original the original um buyer that decided to not to go ahead um has has now lost has now lost the opportunity. So oh, it's wow. a, a case of fortune favouring the brave there. Yeah, you snooze, you lose, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. But fair enough. I mean, so I mean, that's great to hear. I mean, Paul, do you, do you feel this is going to continue, this sort of 
level of activity, this level of confidence, which clearly sort of maybe had a bit of a, a dip, but has rebounded a little bit now? Yeah, I mean, we're certainly, um, we, as, as Adam was saying, we, we did have some processes go on hold, but I think we've now, um, when we went into lockdown, um, we've got now one transaction that's still currently on hold and the rest are now all continuing. We've got new processes starting and um, and the appetite for banks and private equity in particular still remains very strong in the sector. Um, yeah. I think they, they recognise that this isn't like a banking crisis-led recession. It's a, a consumer-led recession because people can't get out and spend money. I think they expect a fairly rapid bounce back when businesses do return to normal. And um, there's no shortage of institutional investment that will want to find a good home. And and you've mentioned retail. Well, you know, institutional investors are going to be think very hard about retail, maybe hospitality, travel, in terms of investing. Then, which means they've got a narrower range of options to invest in. And actually, ICT, you know, telecoms technology is one of the few areas where they can probably invest with great confidence yeah. in the long term. And I think that's what's driving the appetite. And the other thing worth Bear in mind is as well that you know in, in the ICT reseller space there are a number of buy and builds out there and their business plans are predicated on on acquisitions and if they stop acquiring um, it means they're likely to fall short on their plans that they they've set out to their investors so again we we think that that will continue to keep momentum going in in their in this sort of acquisition space okay so, so Adam I mean funds for businesses um they're still very much on the table you know open open to those businesses looking to perhaps grow this period yeah i mean the um banks aren't a sort of low low risk funders aren't they but they even despite this we um we recently completed um sort of the refinance uh, for eacs which is sort of it and managed services um and yeah we were you know we were very pleased to see the fact that um you know th that that growth capital is is still there um they were you know the banks are being reassured i guess by the levels of recurring revenue um it doesn't need to be you know 95 percent, but just a strong level of recurring alongside you know a growth plan and, and some 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 good customers uh and yeah we we, we we were able to identify a good number of funding options. So, okay. uh, so it's I really mean, encouraging for the sector. Let, yeah, let's, I mean, let's, let's, let's dispel a few myths there. You, you, um, you've already dispelled the, the fire sale myth yep. That's okay, good. Earlier, earlier on. And then they're the recurring revenue. You know, there's people have been talking about a mythical number. If your recurring revenue isn't at 70%, um, then you might be in, tr in trouble. Um, but you're saying that that's not necessarily, not necess necessarily the case? No, I mean, it's pretty. So, go you go, Paul. Yeah, I mean, I think you know clearly if your recurring revenue isn't at seventy percent, if if it's a if it's sort of fifty or below, you are probably going to have to relook at your business and the, you know some of the um, staffing levels in the business. But most you know ICT resellers, they they have got that flexibility if they need it. You know, they're not highly geared, not they've not got high operational gearing. Um, you know, so. Whilst at the moment they are probably more than most relying on the furlough scheme, if the furlough scheme ends, they, you know, unfortunately they might have to, to shave some cost off their cost base. But, you know, we don't see them, you know, going into a situation where they have to suddenly do a, a drastic fire sale. Um, I mean, yeah. if they do, they're probably not going to be very attractive to buyers anyway, to be honest. So, you know, I, yeah, I just don't see that, that coming to fruition. I, and but I wouldn't I wouldn't say don't underestimate the value of, of professional services. Professional services is your expertise. It defines, you know, your know how in terms of the types of customers you're able to attract and the services that you're able to sell. And, you know, buyers now aren't or or, or many buyers now are looking to acquire just for more than just scale. And the fact that there is some expertise in there will be key in um in driving value even if it does actually mean that your recurring revenue percentage is a bit lower yeah okay um yeah. the the government uh, help you mentioned the furlough scheme there paul uh, that comes to an end uh, in october time you know a lot of a lot of 
analysts out there predicting you know, we're going to have another uh, tricky time at, at that point. You know, what what what's your thoughts for this market um, in in October time? Do you think we're going to see is this going to be a different sort of landscape again, or do you think much of the same? I think most businesses. I mean, it, one in October is still quite a long way off, so businesses will be able to plan accordingly. So they'll, you know, right now they'll be looking at their their cost base and an understanding if furlough goes, you know, can we afford to um, maintain the same level of overhead that we've currently got? And if not, you know, we'll, where we make some changes. But you know, I, I had a call to a reseller this morning who was, you know, they were saying they're pleasantly surprised they continue to generate lots of cash. Uh, bad debts, bad debts haven't anywhere been anywhere near as much as they're expecting. Now they are. You know, fully aware that that part, partly is because of their clients are, are benefiting from the furlough scheme, and so there'll be some careful monitoring of of bad debts. You know, once you get towards October, but you know, they're providing business critical solutions. The last thing you want to not pay is your IT and telecoms bill right now because it's yeah. probably keeping the business going and uh, keeping your staff talking. And uh, so, yeah, I think you know, with that planning. I think it'd be very much business as usual. Maybe some some slight structural changes in certain businesses, but um, yeah, most of that most of the businesses in the sector are growing anyway. You know, digital transformation is is only going to accelerate because of what's been happening, and the need for more resilient telecoms and IT infrastructure is only going to increase because of what's happening now. You know, we've all we've all suffered from bad broadband. So what's that problem? So, um, <laughs> we'd all like to see that improve. Yeah, more more staff in companies are going to be um, doing more video calls and going to meetings. Everyone's going to need a bit more connectivity. So, yeah, we, we see the, the, the sort of short, medium, and long term future still uh, still very positively. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, on on the furlough scheme, I mean, a lot a lot of the channel have taken advantage of of that of, of the furlough scheme. Which um, you know, not necessarily from a we need to, but a it's prudent to do so sort of stance. Um, I, don't, I don't know what you're what you're seeing, Adam, on that front, and you know, what what are your thoughts on the way the government has really propped up the economy as a whole? What are your thoughts there? Oh, the um, well, it's certainly <laughs> it, drastic action was you know was required really. Um, the hopefully really I'm just focused on sort of getting back to normal it's good to see so the high streets open now um hopefully you know we'll start to see people getting back to office personally i'm you know i'm quite looking forward to the uh the social aspects i guess of sort of working alongside colleagues rather than within a box on a, a screen um so um yeah i'm just hoping that we can begin to safely lift restrictions now and get back to an old normal yeah, absolutely. So, is this the um, is the start of something? Do you feel in in the M and A sector? You know, we we've, we've period that this is this is a great market to be in. We are so critical for the underlying infrastructure and running of the, of every day to day business. You know, comms mm -hmm. and IT. Who doesn't need that? Um, and is this the start of you know a bit of fuel to the fire? Do you think in in the market? What do you think, Adam? Uh, it was, you know, it's been burning hot for a few years now, and um, it, it it's going to continue. I mean, we've got great visibility. We know a lot of our peers who aren't specialists or who work general, work more generally, are certainly a lot quieter than normal. Um, and we've sort of seen a lot of our uh, our competitors sort of use a furlough scheme. We haven't had to. Um, we we're busy we, because of our deal flow which generally is sort of you know we see deals six months before they they're announced and we know that there's continued strong activity and investment um so it's very much uh it, it, it looks very much like it's going to continue clearly we've seen some big impacts made by the likes of zoom and teams and and it'd be interesting to see how sort of the more traditional comm side reacts to that i think there is a big threat there but equally there's also a big opportunity um and again that that's going to drive um that's going to drive a desire to acquire expertise um, along those things. So, you know, it's uh, it's 
we expect the markets have remained strong. We expect there to be um, some changes and developments along the way. But, you know, that's the way it's always been. Yeah, brilliant. So, Okay, well, look, I think that's a that's a great note to, to end the interview on. I'd like to thank you very much for joining me today and uh, good luck with your future deals in, in your pipeline at the moment. And mm -hmm. to my audience, thank you very much for watching. My name is David Dungay. You've been watching Commerce Business Live. Thanks, thank David. You. Cheers. Cheers.